You build a house one brick at a time. I am first and foremost a systems and networking engineer. I have been working with networking components and systems components for a really, really long time. And it was only in the past year or two that I started to embrace code as a viable solution to, well, anything. And it didn't start with the networking front either. I really wanted to automate systems administration tasks, so I learned PowerShell. And PowerShell, the way I learned PowerShell is I read a book by Don Jones called Learn PowerShell in a Month of Lunches. This is really kind of the key point that I'm driving at here. When they say a month of lunches, they wrote the book so that you could read one chapter a day during your lunch break. The chapters were written so that they only took you 40 minutes to an hour, including time for labbing. And that was a really really impactful and powerful learning objective for me because that meant that I could not take a tremendous amount of time out of my my day in order to learn something new. I was able to digest it over a 24-hour period, try something with it, uh, and really learn it. And I started to apply that mentality towards everything, not just learning PowerShell, but everything. Take things in small bits. You know, when I was watching CBT Nuggets videos, I would be like, okay, I'll watch 20 or 30 minutes of CBT Nuggets videos, let that sink in and digest it, and then do it again the next day. Or any other book that I'm learning, I could do it that the next day. So what I really wanted to talk to you about today is kind of this this gist that I'm getting from the community, and that's that a lot of people who are interested in DevNet uh, are actually network engineers, not software developers. I mean, Cisco has marketed this as a software development certification, but the more and more I got into creating the course, the actual core content of the course, uh, the more and more I found out that this was not a software development certification. There is a huge component of software development because that's what you're doing. You're developing scripts and code to automate network tasks. But what we're talking about is we're combining software development principles and Python with the networking skills that we may already have or maybe not. Maybe you're coming from a completely green background. And when we combine those together, uh, we have a very well-maintained, scalable solution for managing networks. And this doesn't apply to just data center people. We're talking Meraki for small mom and pop shops or MSPs. We're talking DNA Center for the campus. We're talking SD-WAN. We're talking Firepower for our security network engineers. All of these people who are working in this environment today should be very, very interested in the DevNet Associate exam because it's going to be all about making the tasks that took you days, hours or days, and scaling that all the way down to minutes or even seconds. And we can make it even proactive, proactively monitoring our devices and alerting us on all kinds of different applications and platforms because automation is about integrating all of these platforms together. An interface can go down on one of my switches and I could get a text message or a post in Slack about it because of that ability to automate the monitoring and delivery of messages. So this this begs the question though, how good do you have to be at software development, right? Like that's that's a very stressful thing for a network engineer who's who's not worked in code before. How much Python do I really need to know? Well, again, pause. Think about the overall message of this video. You build a house one brick at a time. Read one chapter a day. Automate the boring stuff with Python. This is a book. The preface of this book is there's Python for software developers and there's code. And then there's the rest of us. There's the rest of us who have not had traditional code, traditional software development background. This book is for y'all. And how much of this book, do I mean, it's it's a 500-page book, how much of this book do you need to read in order to be able to dive into DevNet? I'd venture to say that by the time you're in Chapter 5, you're good to go. You, You can then dive into DevNet stuff. But pause and take in a moment, too. Our DevNet course that we're designing on CBT Nuggets was designed with you in mind. We're going to have Python skills and Python basics in there, Ben, 
who is doing all of our software development section, already has Python courses available on CBT Nuggets now. So if you're not the book reading type, CBT Nuggets already has you covered and you can start getting a jump on Python right now. Python is the most human readable language, one of the easiest ones to learn. That's not to say that it's super easy because if you've never done object-oriented programming, there's still going to be some foreign concepts. But like I keep saying, don't expect to be a Python expert in 24 hours. You build this foundation one brick at a time. And like I'm saying, if you read one chapter a day, by the end of chapter five, you'll have a good foundation to get started in DevNet. You're five days away. You're five days away from having an okay enough foundation to where you can start learning how to make API requests and parse JSON data out, or at least reading a script and trying to decipher and understand what's going on. So sure, there is an additional core of foundations in order for the DevNet Associate exam. There's software development, there's Python, that's now we've got to learn Python and software development, and then there's networking. So whether you're a network engineer who's trying to get into Python and software development, or you're a software developer who's trying to get into network engineering, uh, you're not standing in front of this gigantic mountain that you'll have to climb over years. It's something that you can pick up relatively quickly. And ultimately, when you grab your CCNA, and you've learned how to really understand networking fundamentals, like from getting your CCNA, jumping to the DevNet is a pretty solid move. Because now we've taken what we've learned in Cisco's CCNA, we've learned the core functionalities of routing, switching, and even some basic security functionality. Now we can apply automation to these techniques. And in our DevNet Associate course, we cover nearly every single Cisco platform. So whether you're dealing with Cisco iOS devices, Nexus, Meraki, Firepower, CUCM, SD-WAN, UCS, all of those are covered in the DevNet Associate course here at CBT Nuggets. So if you have any other questions, if you want to start a dialogue on this, hit me up in the comments or follow me on Twitter. I'm very active in those places, and I'm happy to start a conversation with you and see you in the course when it goes live very soon. I'll catch you all on the next one.